Hey there everybody, my name is John Siskovich. I'm a farmer here in Western Connecticut and I have this little farm brewery here and I got your questions in on farm marketing solutions and Revel's got a question today. Um, through my experiences in the past, what is one thing that I lost the most chickens to uh, and how can you avoid it in the future? So I've done some videos about experiencing loss and having loss on the farm before. Uh, wanted to touch on it again because I got that question in on the inbox. So Rebel asks, what is one thing that you have lost the most chickens to, whether it's sickness uh, or from other chickens from fighting, uh, predators or the elements, and, uh, or handling them uh, from travel or freezers going bad or, you know, what have I lost uh, birds to, whether they're live or dead, uh, being finished product there at the end. Now there are two specific instances that I uh, can think of that I've lost the most birds to over time and they, they happened a while ago and because hopefully you learn from your mistakes and put uh, procedures and mechanisms in place to mitigate your losses or reduce your losses going forward. Uh, so a couple things that I've lost birds to, uh, I, merved, I didn't use the chicken tractors one time, we did an experiment with um, just the kind of like chicksaw mobile roof thing i've used it for my pigs and all the birds went out at night it rained they ducked down in the grass because they were small and i lost like 80 birds that night uh, and that was tragic coming out the next morning and picking up all the little dead bodies uh, broke my heart um, hmm. another one when the birds got really big this was my very first year of farming so that first example was my second year of farming my for the this example is from my first year of farming when it got really, really hot, we hit this mid-July heat wave and it was consecutive 95 degree days and the broilers were getting really big. I was processing every week, so I always had big birds on the farm. And uh, I didn't check their water enough times. And that bucket uh, that I use with the nipple drinkers on the bottom, for that extended heat wave, wasn't enough water because there was some algae growing in and a few of them got plugged and the birds were too hot and lazy to get up and walk over and drink slowly from that nipple drinker. So how I solved that was getting these big plastic trays. This is my short-term solution. Um, getting the big plastic trays, filling them with water and having fresh cold water right up down at the bird's level that they could uh, get to and drink. Now before that, I lost, I think, 20 or 30 birds uh, to heat exhaustion because uh, these birds have no way to cool down, they pant. And the more they pant, their body is moving, their heart is racing. And because Cornish Cross grows so fast, if they're heat stress, they pant, they overheat, uh, and they will have a heart attack and die, and then it will just lay down in the grass and pass away. And that also heartbreaking and tragic to walk up and see these birds that are eight weeks, that like, you know, it's Tuesday and you're processing on Thursday and there's 20 of them dead, and the chicken tractors, all because I didn't get them enough water at the right time in the right way, that was difficult. So things I've done to uh, change that is on the heat wave days, I go out and check them several times a day. I'll actually take my hose and gently spray the birds down, like mist the birds, so they get wet. And you'll see that they go from panting to a little bit frantic, because they don't like, really, really like the water, um, but then they all sit down and cool down and all that panting has stopped as the breeze blows by and uh, through evapo or the evaporation and the uh, birds uh, cool down. I also clean my waters more regularly, make sure all the nipple drinkers are flowing, uh, and just make sure that everything is working and the birds have everything they need to avoid the heat stress. My last one, so we had uh, young birds, we had old birds, and then we had dead birds, uh, was freezers. I don't have a walk-in freezer for everything. I have a series of uh, chest freezers, and we actually installed Wi-Fi enabled uh, sensors that go and send email alerts if that freezer breaks down, turns off, is left open, uh, left open a crack, and there's a temperature difference for an extended period of time. These things are super easy to program. And they're the TAG sensors, T-A-G, and uh, they're not that expensive, they're easy to use, there's a decent online interface, and it sends to an app on my phone that I can get an email or text message alert uh, when a freezer has turned off. Now without that, I came to find out that uh, the freezer was thawing, and I had some of the birds were frozen and some of them were thawed, and what we did that day uh, was say that they're all staff birds, we weren't going to all eat them but we fired up a couple grills, grilled all the birds, pulled the meat, and then repackaged it as cooked meat, and then we had pre-cooked meat for us internally. We didn't sell that uh, because, you know, food safety rules. Um, we didn't sell any of that, but we had 
one pound pre-cooked meat, which was just fantastic for us to use. Uh, those are three of the instances where I've lost the most birds over time. Right now, my losses are really low. One, because I have not as much livestock on the farm this year. Uh, but two, you make those mistakes year to year and you put those uh, procedures in place to help you not screw up again and lose birds. Um, so Revel, I hope that answers your question. And if you're watching this video, I hope that you don't make those same mistakes as well. Tomorrow we're going to a question from Clay. We're gonna go over my chicken tractor and discuss uh, what Clay's issue has been. And uh, I actually wrote back to him in an email because this was kind of a more of an emergency, but because he wrote in and I answered him and it solved his problem, uh, I wanted to make a video about it because you might run into the same scenario. Uh, stay tuned on the channel tomorrow to see that video. You can subscribe to the channel because I'm supposed to ask you that because I'm a YouTube person. Uh, but really enjoy your day and until next time, I will see you out in the field.